The Battle of the Atlantic was the lengthiest uninterrupted military operation in World War II, starting in 1939 and continuing until the surrender of Germany in 1945. The focus of the campaign was the Allied naval blockade of Germany, which was acknowledged the day after the pronouncement of war by France and Great Britain. Conversely, the Battle of the Atlantic also featured an attempt at a counter blockade by Germany. The peak of the Battle of the Atlantic occurred from mid-1940 to the end of the year 1943. Allied tankers were high priority targets for German submarines during the Battle of the Atlantic in World War II because Britain could not survive without imported oil. The accompanying image shows the Allied tanker Dixie Arrow being torpedoed by the German submarine U-71 in 1942. For the Allied nations, there were three main objectives to blockade the Axis powers in Europe, to secure Allied sea lanes, and to gain the ability to project military power across the Atlantic. The Axis, for their part, wanted to disrupt Allied use of the Atlantic to resupply and to fight. Winston Churchill believed, as did many German planners, that the Battle of the Atlantic was Germany's best opportunity to defeat the Allies in World War II. World War II lasted a total of 2,075 days, and the Battle of the Atlantic lasted for exactly 2,073 of these. The campaign commenced with the sinking of the passenger liner SS Athenia, pictured here. On uh, September 3rd, 1939, the same day that Britain and France declared war on Germany. Of the 1,400 plus uh, people on board, 98 passengers and 19 crew members were killed in the attack. 28 of the dead passengers were U.S. citizens, which led to German fears that the sinking of the Athenia might bring the U.S. into the war, much like the sinking of the Lusitania helped turn U.S. public opinion during World War I. Hitler... Um, was very angry at the sinking of the Athenia, and uh, he believed um, this could not help uh, German efforts to convince the British and the French to surrender in the war. Since the SS Athenia was an unarmed passenger ship, the attack was in violation of the Hague Conventions and the London Naval Treaty of 1930. Now, Germany was not a signatory um, at the time to these treaties, but the Germans did train their naval commanders to follow most of the relevant standards of these treaties. The commander of the U-boat, U-30, fired without warning on the SS Athenia. The captain afterward claimed he believed that he was uh, targeting an auxiliary cruiser. But post-war investigations on this incident have been inconclusive, and there's still no definitive answer as to why this passenger ship was targeted. German U-boats patrolled the Atlantic Ocean to guard against the British blockade of Europe and in an effort to prevent supplies from the U.S. reaching European allies, especially Great Britain, as we mentioned. U-boats, the, uh, the term is short for the uh, shortened form of the German naval term, Unterseeboot, typically operated in groups of 10 vessels known as wolf packs. The Kriegsmarine, the German Navy, engaged in submarine warfare to shut off British connections to supplies. In addition, uh, Italian submarines were also active in the Battle of the Atlantic. 32 Italian submarines that operated in the Atlantic sank a total of 109 vessels, something a little bit more than a half million tons of Allied shipping sunk uh, by the Italians. The Allies, in response, developed a convoy system whereby merchant ships received escorts, by destroyers and other uh, military vessels. The British also developed a method of spotting U-boats that was a precursor to modern radar. It was a form of sonar known by the acronym ASDIC, ASTIC. The system used quartz piezoelectric crystals to create the world's first practical underwater uh, sound detection device. This technological advance uh, managed to give the Allies the upper hand in the battle for the Atlantic Still in the peak year of German successes in the Battle of the Atlantic, over 1,100 Allied ships were sunk. Aiding the German effort 
was the fact that German intelligence had cracked both the Royal Navy communication cipher before the war and the merchant vessel ship code during the war. Now, the Royal Navy eventually um, created a better system by the middle of 1940, uh, but these uh, intelligence gains allowed the Germans for the first years of the war to have access to detailed information uh, about merchant traffic, making the job of locating merchant vessels that much easier. The Atlantic Campaign saw the German Navy's surface raiders and U-boats face off against Allied convoys. Uh, the, uh, the battles raged throughout the North and South Atlantic um, from the United Kingdom and shipping designed to aid the Soviet Union. The, con the ships, rather, the merchant vessels were typically protected by British and Canadian naval and air forces and later assisted by U.S. military ships and aircraft. For the first half of 1940, there were no German surface raiders in the Atlantic uh, because the Kriegsmarine was largely being used for the invasion of Norway that year. The Bismarck was the first of two Bismarck-class battleships built for the Kriegsmarine. The vessel was named after German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, who led the efforts to unify Germany in 1871. The Bismarck and its sister ship, the Tirpitz, were the biggest battleships ever manufactured by German industry and two of the largest battleships ever constructed by any European nation. The Bismarck, along with the heavy cruiser Prince Eugene, was assigned the task of entering the Atlantic Ocean and attacking Allied shipping from North America to Great Britain. However, the vessels were repeatedly sighted near Scandinavia, and British vessels managed to obstruct their passage numerous times. Uh, at the Battle of Denmark Strait, uh, the Bismarck engaged and destroys the battle, destroyed the battle cruiser HMS Hood, which was one of the most powerful vessels at the time in the Royal Navy. During the battle, the Bismarck was hit several times and suffered oil leaks. Of the 1,418 crew members on the HMS Hood, only three crew members survived. The sinking of the HMS Hood sparked a massive hunt for the Bismarck by dozens of Allied ships. On May 27, 1941, British naval vessels attacked and sank the Bismarck. Out of a crew of over 2,200 men on the, Mis the Bismarck, only 114 survived. Uh, the sinking of the Bismarck, though, became the end of German warship raids, even though this was uh, at the Battle of uh, Denmark Strait with a tactical victory for the Germans. Um, they, uh, they backed away from surface ship raids. Uh, this was also aided by the emergence of long-range search aircraft that uh, particularly neutralized the ability of surface raiders to attack shipping because they couldn't do so without being uh, discovered. Liberty ships were cargo ships built in the U.S. during World War II. The original ship design was British in origin. These were vessels ordered by Britain to replace ships torpedoed by German U-boats. The Liberty ships were procured for the U.S. fleet as well and, and for lend-lease deliveries of war material to Britain. They were also used um, to help the Soviet Union via distribution up the Persian Gulf and through Iran. American Marine facilities constructed uh, over 2,700 Liberty ships in the period from 1941 to 1945. This was the largest number of ships ever produced in this war or any other from one particular design. Pictured here is the SS John W. Brown, which has been restored as a museum ship in Baltimore Harbor. There's only two of these Liberty ships still functional. Um, in this image, the vessel was en route to the port of Toledo, Ohio in the year 2000 for some refitting and remachining. Related to the uh, Liberty ship was uh, the emergence of a new cargo ship called the Victory Ships. They were produced also in very large numbers by North American shipyards during World War II. The ships were designed to replace vessels lost in attacks by German submarines. The Victory ship was uh, rather similar to the ship design used for the Liberty ship, although it was a bigger vessel. In total, uh, about 530 Victory ships were constructed during World War II. 
However, since most of these ships came online toward the end of the war, only two were actually sunk by German vessels during the war. This chart shows the change over time in Allied ship losses and ship construction. In the first three years of the war, Allied ship losses, which are marked in black on this chart, approached 2,500 vessels with only 300 new ships being built. New ships on this chart are in red. By 1942, though, the tide began to change, and the year 1943 saw a massive shift in this ratio of sunk to constructed vessels, with over three times as many ships being built as were sunk by Axis U-boats. The years 1944 and 1945 saw a marked decrease in ship losses, largely because the Germans had all but stopped uh, producing new attack vessels in favor of other military spending during the war, the latter stages of the war. The Allies gradually gained the upper hand, driving the German service raiders from the ocean by the middle of 1941. They had conclusively defeated the U-boats in a ser series of uh, convoy encounters between March and May 1943. Uh, by the second half of 1943, the number of attacks by U-boats continued to decrease. The accompanying images of a collection of anti-submarine weapons known as hedgehogs Depicted here is a 24-barreled anti-submarine mortar mounted on the forecastle of the British destroyer HMS Westcott. The Hedgehog was a weapon that's uh, known as a, a spigot mortar. It launched contact-fused bombs ahead of the firing ship while the target was still within the sonar beam. Uh, this was an advantage over existing technology because un unlike depth charges, which explode near a vessel, or under or above, hedgehog charges exploded on impact. The hedgehog also allowed the attacking ship to change course and maintain contact if the target vessel maneuvered. Depth charges generally required the attacking vessel to pass over the submarine, which would create a window when the attacking vessel would not be able to see the submarine on its radar. Uh, to sum up, during the Battle of the Atlantic, over 2,000 merchant ships were lost in the North Atlantic and more than 30,000 merchant sailors died as a result of Axis attacks. Of the uh, 30,000 men of the British Merchant Navy, this was about uh, one-fifth of its pre-war strength, who died in U-boat attacks between 1939 and 1945, the majority drowned or died from exposure in the icy cold waters of the North Atlantic. About 330 convoys in the Atlantic were attacked by U-boats. Uh, in all, some 565 escorts and other military vessels were sunk by, uh, sunk by the Germans of Allied vessels. Uh, approximately 1,100 vessels that traveled independently without military escorts were also sunk. In total, some 13.5 uh, million tons of Allied shipping were destroyed by Axis vessels over the course of the war. For the Germans, over 30,000 sailors died in the conflict in the North Atlantic and South Atlantic, and approximately 780 submarines were destroyed by Allied attacks. Um, on the positive side of the ledger, though, uh, over 100,000 transatlantic crossings were successfully completed during the war, meaning that uh, 95 to 96% of all transatlantic voyages during the war were successful. And this brings to a close our brief look at the Battle of the Atlantic during the Second World War.